The ancient Mesopotamian underworld, most often known in Sumerian as Kur, Urkaya, Kuku, Arali, or Kagal and in Akkadian as Ursetu, although it had many names in both languages, was a dark, dreary cavern located deep below the ground, where inhabitants were believed to continue a shadowy version of life on Earth. The only food or drink was dry dust, but family members of the deceased would pour libations for them to drink. Unlike many other afterlives of the ancient world, in the Sumerian underworld, there was no final judgment of the deceased and the dead were neither punished nor rewarded for their deeds in life. A person's quality of existence in the underworld was determined by his or her conditions of burial. The ruler of the underworld was the goddess Ereshigal, who lived in the palace Ganzir, sometimes used as a name for the underworld itself. Her husband was either Gugalana, the canal inspector of Anu, or, especially in later stories, Nergal, the god of death. After the Akkadian period c. BC, Nergal sometimes took over the role as ruler of the underworld. The seven gates of the underworld are guarded by a gatekeeper, who is named Nedi in Sumerian. The god Namtar acts as Ereshigal's suckle, or divine attendant. The dying god Dumuzid spends half the year in the underworld, while, during the other half, his place is taken by his sister, the scribal goddess Geshtinana, who records the names of the deceased. The underworld was also the abode of various demons, including the hideous child devourer Lamashtu, the fearsome wind demon and protector god Pazuzu, and Gala, who dragged mortals to the underworld. Topic. Names The Sumerians had a large number of different names which they applied to the underworld, including Arali, Urkaya, Kuku, Akor, Kagal, and Ganzir. All of these terms were later borrowed into Akkadian. The rest of the time, the underworld was simply known by words meaning earth or ground including the terms Kur and Ki in Sumerian and the word Ursetu in Akkadian. When used in reference to the underworld, the word Kur usually means «ground», but sometimes this meaning is conflated with another possible meaning of the word Kur as «mountain». The cuneiform sign for Kur was written ideographically with the cuneiform sign, a pictograph of a mountain. Sometimes the underworld is called the land of no return, the desert, or the lower world. The most common name for the earth and the underworld in Akkadian is Ursetu, but other names for the underworld include Amatu, Arali, Aralu, Bit di Dumuzi, House of Dumuzi, Daninu, Ursetu Latari, Earth of No Return. Ganser, Kanasora, Hastu, Urkaya, Kiuru, Kuku, Darkness, Kurnugu, Earth of No Return, Lamu, Matu Saplatu, and Kakaru. Topic: <laughs> Conditions. All souls went to the same afterlife, and a person's actions during life had no effect on how the person would be treated in the world to come. Unlike in the ancient Egyptian afterlife, there was no process of judgment or evaluation for the deceased, they merely appeared before Ereshigal, who would pronounce them dead, and their names would be recorded by the scribal goddess Geshtinana. The souls in Kerr were believed to eat nothing but dry dust and family members of the deceased would ritually pour libations into the dead person's grave through a clay pipe, thereby allowing the dead to drink. 
For this reason, it was considered essential to have as many offspring as possible so that one's descendants could continue to provide libations for the dead person to drink for many years. Those who had died without descendants would suffer the most in the underworld, because they would have nothing to drink at all. Sometimes the dead are described as naked or clothed in feathers like birds, nonetheless, funerary evidence indicates that some people believed that the goddess Inanna, Arishigal's younger sister, had the power to award her devotees with special favors in the afterlife. During the Third Dynasty of Ur c. 2112 c. 2004 BC, it was believed that a person's treatment in the afterlife depended on how he or she was buried. Those that had been given sumptuous burials would be treated well, but those who had been given poor burials would fare poorly. Those who did not receive a proper burial, such as those who had died in fires and whose bodies had been burned or those who died alone in the desert, would have no existence in the underworld at all, but would simply cease to exist. The Sumerians believed that, for the highly privileged, music could alleviate the bleak conditions of the underworld. Topic. Geography The entrance to Kerr was believed to be located in the Zagros Mountains in the Far East. A staircase led down to the gates of the underworld. The underworld itself is usually located even deeper below ground than the Abza, the body of fresh water which the ancient Mesopotamians believed lay deep beneath the earth. In other, conflicting traditions, however, it seems to be located at a remote and inaccessible location on Earth, possibly somewhere in the far west. This alternate tradition is hinted at by the fact that the underworld is sometimes called desert, and by the fact that actual rivers located far away from Sumer are sometimes referred to as the river of the underworld. The underworld was believed to have seven gates, through which a soul needed to pass. All seven gates were protected by bolts. The god Neti was the gatekeeper. Erishigal's suckle, or messenger, was the god Namtar. The palace of Erishigal was known as Ganzir. At night, the sun god Utu was believed to travel through the underworld as he journeyed to the east in preparation for the sunrise. One Sumerian literary work refers to Utu illuminating the underworld and dispensing judgment there and Shamash Him 31 BWL 126 states that Utu serves as a judge of the dead in the underworld alongside the Malku, Kusu, and the Anunnaki. On his way through the underworld, Utu was believed to pass through the Garden of the Sun God, which contained trees that bore precious gems as fruit. The Sumerian hymn Anana and Utu contains an etiological myth in which Utu's sister Anana begs her brother Utu to take her to Kerr, so that she may taste the fruit of a tree that grows there, which will reveal to her all the secrets of sex. Utu complies and, in Kerr, Anana tastes the fruit and becomes knowledgeable of sex. The hymn employs the same motif found in the myth of Anki and Ninyorsak and in the later biblical story of Adam and Eve. <laughs> Inhabitants Erishigal and family A number of deities were believed by the ancient Mesopotamians to reside in the underworld. The queen of the underworld was the goddess Erishigal. She was believed to live in palace known as Ganzir. 
In earlier stories, her husband is Gugalana, but, in later myths, her husband is the god Nergal. Her gatekeeper was the god Neti and her suckle is the god Namtar. In the poem Anana's Descent into the Underworld, Erishigal is described as Anana's older sister. Gugalana is the first husband of Erishigal, the queen of the underworld. His name probably originally meant, Canal Inspector of En, and he may be merely an alternative name for Enugi. The son of Erishigal and Gugalana is Ninazu. In Anana's descent into the underworld, Anana tells the gatekeeper Neti that she is descending to the underworld to attend the funeral of Gugalana, the husband of my elder sister Erishigal. During the Akkadian period c. BC, Erishigal's role as the ruler of the underworld was assigned to Nergal, the god of death. The Akkadians attempted to harmonize this dual rulership of the underworld by making Nergal Erishigal's husband. Nergal is the deity most often identified as Erishigal's husband. He was also associated with forest fires and identified with the fire god, Gibal, fevers, plagues, and war. In myths, he causes destruction and devastation. Ninazu is the son of Arishigal and the father of Ningishzida. He is closely associated with the underworld. He was mostly worshipped in Eshnuna during the 3rd millennium BC, but he was later supplanted by the Hurrian storm god Tishbak. A god named Ninazu was also worshipped at Enagi in southern Sumer, but this may be a different local god by the same name. His divine beast was the Mushusu, a kind of dragon, which was later given to Tishbak and then Marduk. Ningishzida is a god who normally lives in the underworld. He is the son of Ninazu and his name may be etymologically derived from a phrase meaning, Lord of the Good Tree. In the Sumerian poem, The Death of Gilgamesh, the hero Gilgamesh dies and meets Ningishzida, along with Dumuzid, in the underworld. Gudea, the Sumerian king of the city-state of Lagash, revered Ningishzida as his personal protector. In the myth of Adapa, Dumuzid and Ningishzida are described as guarding the gates of the highest heaven. Ningishzida was associated with the constellation Hydra. Other underworld deities Dumuzid, later known by the corrupted form Tamas, is the ancient Mesopotamian god of shepherds and the primary consort of the goddess Anana. His sister is the goddess Geshtinana. In addition to being the god of shepherds, Dumuzid was also an agricultural deity associated with the growth of plants. Ancient Near Eastern peoples associated Dumuzid with the springtime, when the land was fertile and abundant, but, during the summer months, when the land was dry and barren, it was thought that Dumuzid had died. During the month of Dumuzid, which fell in the middle of summer, people all across Sumer would mourn over his death. An enormous number of popular stories circulated throughout the Near East surrounding his death. Geshtinana is a rural agricultural goddess sometimes associated with dream interpretation. She is the sister of Dumuzid, the god of shepherds. In one story, she protects her brother when the Gala demons come to drag him down to the underworld by hiding him in successively in four different places. In another version of the story, she refuses to tell the Gala where he is hiding, even after they torture her. The Gala eventually take Dumuzid away after he is betrayed by an unnamed friend. 
but Anana decrees that he and Geshtinana will alternate places every six months, each spending half the year in the underworld while the other stays in heaven. While she is in the underworld, Geshtinana serves as Arishigal's scribe. Lugal Irra and Maslamta Aya are a set of twin gods who were worshipped in the village of Kisiga, located in northern Babylonia. They were regarded as guardians of doorways and they may have originally been envisioned as a set of twins guarding the gates of the underworld, who chopped the dead into pieces as they passed through the gates. During the Neo-Assyrian period (911 BC to 609 BC), small depictions of them would be buried at entrances, with Lugal Irra always on the left and Maslamta Aya always on the right. They are identical and are shown wearing horned caps and each holding an axe and a mace. They are identified with the constellation Gemini, which is named after them. Neti is the gatekeeper of the underworld. In the story of Anana's descent into the underworld, he leads Anana through the seven gates of the underworld, removing one of her garments at each gate so that when she comes before Arishigal, she is naked and symbolically powerless. Belit Seri is a Thonic underworld goddess who was thought to record the names of the deceased as they entered the underworld. Enmasara is a minor deity of the underworld. Seven or eight other minor deities were said to be his offspring. His symbol was the Susuru, a kind of pigeon. In one incantation, Enmasara and Ninmeshara, his female counterpart, are invoked as ancestors of Enki and as primeval deities. Enugi is the canal inspector of the gods. He is the son of Enlil or Enmasara and his wife is the goddess Nanabjal. He is associated with the underworld and he may be Gugalana, the first husband of Arishigal, under a different name. <laughs> Demons The ancient Mesopotamians also believed that the underworld was home to many demons, which are sometimes referred to as offspring of Arali. These demons could sometimes leave the underworld and terrorize mortals on Earth. One class of demons that were believed to reside in the underworld were known as Gala. Their primary purpose appears to have been to drag unfortunate mortals back to Kerr. They are frequently referenced in magical texts, and some texts describe them as being seven in number. Several extant poems describe the Gala dragging the god Dumuzid into the underworld. Like other demons, however, Gala could also be benevolent and, in a hymn from King Gudea of Lagash c. BC, a minor god named Ig Alima is described as the Great Gala of Gursu. Lamashtu was a demonic goddess with the head of a lion, the teeth of a donkey, naked breasts, a hairy body, hands stained with blood, long fingers and fingernails, and the feet of Anzu. She was believed to feed on the blood of human infants and was widely blamed as the cause of miscarriages and caught deaths. Although Lamashtu has traditionally been identified as a demoness, the fact that she could cause evil on her own without the permission of other deities strongly indicates that she was seen as a goddess in her own right. Mesopotamian peoples protected against her using amulets and talismans. She was believed to ride in her boat on the river of the underworld and she was associated with donkeys. She was believed to be the daughter of An. Pazuzu is a demonic god who was well known to the Babylonians and Assyrians throughout the first millennium BC. He is shown with a rather canine face with abnormally bulging eyes, a scaly body, a snake headed penis, the talons of a bird, and usually wings. 
He was believed to be the son of the god Hanbi. He was usually regarded as evil, but he could also sometimes be a beneficent entity who protected against winds bearing pestilence and he was thought to be able to force Lamashtu back to the underworld. Amulets bearing his image were positioned in dwellings to protect infants from Lamashtu and pregnant women frequently wore amulets with his head on them as protection from her. Ironically, Pazuzu appears in the Exorcist films as the demon that possesses the little girl. Sul Pa'i's name means, youthful brilliance, but he was not envisioned as youthful god. According to one tradition, he was the consort of Ninyorsak, a tradition which contradicts the usual portrayal of Enki as Ninhursag's consort. In one Sumerian poem, offerings to made to Shul Pa'i in the underworld and, in later mythology, he was one of the demons of the underworld. See also Ancient Mesopotamian religion Ghosts in Mesopotamian religions Sumerian religion equals equals notes